Welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together for this sixth Sunday after Pentecost and join in the order of worship contained in your service folder. We stand for our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our intro from Psalm 121 as printed in our service folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The collect of the day is printed for us in our service folder. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the word and sacraments, Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading appointed for this sixth Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the third chapter of the book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. We speak responsibly. The gradual is printed in our service folder. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. The epistle reading is recorded in the eighth chapter of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians in the New Testament. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then, by the will of God, to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. We sing as our hymn of the day, hymn 782, Gracious God, You Send Great Blessings, hymn 782.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be made well and live. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith as we sing the Apostles' Creed, hymn 953, We All Believe in One True God, hymn 953.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. The text for our sermon meditation is our epistle reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It is summer vacation travel time. The parents sitting in the front seat of the van are enjoying the love that they are feeling from the children sitting in the back. Not. Having more than one child, you know that there will be fighting over something in the car. He is not sharing the soda, the toy, the chips, the pillow. So how do parents respond to such sibling squabbles? Do they sweetly say, honey, will you please share your soda with your sister? No, that would be the same response. But adults traveling a long distance with children in the car have become temporarily insane. So they shout, share those chips right now or else I will drop you off on the side of the road and let the state police raise you. Or maybe that was just me. (laughs) How well do children share? Selfishness is part of the hard drive of our sinful nature that is built within us from birth. But even grown up and thinking that we are mature, sharing what we have with others remains a constant challenge for us. But the ability to share what God gives us with those whom God places around us is now part of our new and holy nature. This is the spirit-powered life created in us through our holy baptism and renewed for us through the Word of God, the Holy Bible, and as the body and blood of Jesus are present for us here in the Lord's Supper. Through these means of God's grace, the Holy Spirit works in us that sharing generosity that is unnatural. We just don't come up with it on our own. The goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ moves us to see our giving to others as being the privilege of sharing God's gifts to us. At the time of Paul's writing, the cities of Macedonia uh, in the northern part of Greece are suffering the effects of Roman civil wars fought in their area decades earlier. The Romans who conquered their territory took over anything of any value at all including their local silver mines. Now, in the midst of severe trial and economic poverty, they have plenty of excuses to keep their money to themselves. They could complain about their circumstances, and they could clutch their coins until Caesar's eyes watered. But no, they're not doing that. Instead, they are trusting Jesus' words from our Gospel reading. Do not be afraid, just believe. And believing, they give their offerings. They are generous for the people in the faraway city of Jerusalem, even though all that they know about them are that they are fellow Christians in need. They do not have to be asked or shamed or coerced into doing so. In fact, they themselves are pleading for the privilege of sharing what they have. Well, how could they do such a strange thing? How could they want to give their money away? Because they first have given themselves to the Lord. Our sharing of God's gifts to us for the work of his church and for the needs of others in their, at their time of need is not something that comes naturally to us. It is an act of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ worked within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. No faith in Jesus means no sharing with others in their needs. 
But with faith in Jesus as our Savior, we see this sharing as being a privilege of service to our fellow believers. Now there is a tremendous difference between this one word, service, and the two words, serve us. There is an 80-20 rule when it comes to organizations. 20% of the people are producers who provide service for others, while 80% of the people are consumers who want things done for them. Serve us, they say. In the Christian church, how we share our time and our treasures that God gives us with others is a test of the sincerity of our love, our love for God and for them. In our text, we see that the Macedonian Christians have passed this test with flying colors. The Corinthians themselves have had a good start, but now they have backed off from it. Well, what about us? It is easy for us to feel that others should give more. But what about that person that you talk to in the mirror? How are we doing with the privilege of sharing? We handle the privilege of shopping quite well, for we're buying stuff for ourselves. We enjoy the privilege of eating out in fine restaurants. We cherish the privilege of vacationing in exotic places. We are thrilled by the privilege of gambling in fancy casinos. We are excited by the privilege at playing of playing at our favorite recreation. But what about this privilege of sharing? Those two words just do not seem to go together in our sinful vocabulary, for the devil keeps them apart. Our thinking is this, that if you give away some of what you have, you may not have a lot, not a lot, enough left over for yourself. And so we selfishly keep God's gifts to ourselves. While this temptation works on us, it never worked on Jesus. The eternal Son of God literally had the universe as his own. Complete power, full glory, the adoration of angels, a heavenly existence. Except that his people were lost in their sins. They were separated from him. And only he could fix that deadly problem. Instead of keeping divine power and glory to himself, he set it aside for us. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, made himself nothing, taking upon himself our human life with all of its limitations, weaknesses, pains, and sufferings. As rich as Jesus was in divine honor, he became poor in the humility of our humanity, even to death upon a cross. By suffering the poverty of our sinfulness on that cross, the risen Lord Jesus Christ now offers us forgiven sinners the wealth of his eternal life. We are rich in God's kind of life, both now and forever because Jesus Christ the eternal Son of God became poor in suffering for us Jesus Christ became poor in life among us to make us rich in life with him he now is the inspiration of our Christian giving sometimes it is said that we are to give until it hurts but here in our text Paul tells the Corinthians don't hurt yourselves. For as the people of God in Jesus Christ, we give until it feels good. With a spirit-inspired faith, we have the privilege of sharing with others. We experience joy knowing that God is working through us to be a blessing to others as he first has blessed us. With trust in God, we know that as we share with others, God can and he will continue to provide for our needs. So how are we doing with this privilege of sharing? There are plenty of gimmicks and ways of coercing money out of people. In years past, there was such a thing called the scandal sheet, 
which publicized everyone's contributions to the congregation as an attempt to guilt them into giving more. Or we might force the families who use our congregation's ministry, particularly our day school, into paying their fair share of expenses. Some congregations even make people bring in their 1040 tax form, and based upon that, they will say, this is how much you owe in order to be members here, and the people lap it up. But finances forced out of folks in the flock are not a feat of faith, but instead a facade of fellowship that is fake. The Greek word taking part in our text is translated in other passages as fellowship or communion, that is, having all things in common. This giving comes from recognizing the relationship that Jesus has with us and that we have with others in Jesus' name. We share what God first has given to us, not because we have to, but instead realizing that we get to. Our charitable gifts and our worship offerings are not forced upon us by God's law, but are the fruits of faith that are worked within us by God's grace. We cannot outgive God's goodness to us. He will not allow us to share ourselves into poverty. Paul says that the Macedonians know that. They are not afraid to give to others despite their own economic hard times. And experience proves that Christians give better when the times are tough and the dollars are tight. Each one of us in this family of faith at St. John's has the opportunity to take part in this privilege of sharing. For all we have has been given to us by God. And there is more of that where it came from. God still and will provide. Faith in this giving, loving, and saving God shares what he gives us for the work of his church and for the good of others in their need. What God worked among the Macedonians and what he wanted to work among the Corinthians is what he works among us here at St. John's. It is the gift of faith in Jesus, the gift of kind speech, the gift of eagerness to pitch in and to help out wherever needed, and the gift of love for others. But there is also this gift of giving and the privilege of sharing. And the Holy Spirit continues to work that grace of God here among us. Frazzled fathers freak out over the lack of sharing by their children. Our Heavenly Father handles our lack of sharing so much better. He gives our natural stinginess to Jesus. For his son has suffered and died on the cross for that sin also. The Holy Spirit works among us through God's Word and His sacraments, through our baptism, through the Bible, and through the Lord's Supper. So for us to see that all that we have as being gifts of God to us. And we share these gifts as offerings to God and for the good of others. And in doing so, we are not burdened. Instead, we are blessed. Blessed in return by God and also blessed by those who benefit from our privilege of sharing. To God alone be all of the glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we welcome forward our worship offerings, we join together in the singing of the offertory, as it is printed for us in our service folder.
in our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. We give thanks to God for those who serve us as members of our nation's military and as emergency personnel. We pray for favorable weather for farming and safety in the fields this week. And we pray for our district mission partnership with the Lutheran Seminary in the Dominican Republic. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We stand as we join in the prayer of the Church. O Lord, from whom our help comes, you have brought us into your holy Christian Church and made Christ to be our shield from every enemy. Preserve us in such faith until at last you bring us out of this world into the resurrection forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, you have shown to your church the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for our sakes became poor, that by his poverty we might become rich. Give us generous hearts that our abundance may supply our fellow saints in their need. Let our preachers serve for the sake of Christ's call, not for earthly gain, and let those who have received excellence in faith, speech, knowledge, and every other gift of God's word provide richly for the preaching of the gospel and the work of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, your compassion does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men, but your mercies are new every morning. We commend into your care those who serve us in your name and under your direction as elected and appointed government officials, members of our nation's armed forces, law enforcement officers, emergency responders, and health care professionals. May your protection of them be reflected in their dedicated service to us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you did not turn aside the bold request of Jairus, nor the timid faith of the suffering woman. We implore you to hear our prayers for those in need. Drive away our fears and give us a believing faith. Give healing and strength to the sick and suffering, especially as we remember Mary, Donald, Roger, Christine, Ruth, Pastor Cohen, Julie, Jay, Susie, Marcy, Beth, Riley, Ashlyn, Caden, Gerald, Tyson, Mary, Ted, Richard, Ron, and those we name in our hearts. Give comfort to those who mourn in the knowledge that Christ has destroyed death and all who die in him are only sleeping until you awaken them at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Dearest Lord God, you care for all that you have created. We thank you for the refreshing rain of this past week. We pray that you would continue to provide for the needs and safety of all who work the land and tend the livestock, granting weather that is favorable, equipment that is dependable, and strength that is sufficient in their calling to bring us what our bodies and lives need. Lord, in your mercy. O gracious Father, you call us to bring the little children to you. We thank you that through Concordia the Reformer Seminary in the Dominican Republic, you have planted churches that preach your word faithfully and that invite families to grow in Christ. Continue to bless the work of these seminarians so that those who are outside your family may be gathered into the church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son used his divine powers as a man on earth to heal and to save. We thank you that he continues to use his divine powers as a man, now bodily present in this holy sacrament, to deliver his healing and saving power to faith. Grant that we may worthily seek this medicine of immortality in the Lord's Supper, believing his promises and receiving them now and in eternity. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament as it is printed in your worship folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together the Sanctus, Isaiah, Mighty Seer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 